Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text before us today is the greater book of Lamentations, but picking up specifically on uh, one of the verses that we heard today from chapter 3, verse 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. We begin our meditation upon God's Word today with that word, lament. It's not one we often use in our everyday conversations, but it is very much a part of our everyday life. A lament is an expression of grief or sorrow, perhaps regret over things done or not done in a given time or place. An occasion to ask, why? And that's what gets us to this book of Lamentations today. This book was written by the prophet Jeremiah following the downfall of Jerusalem to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon around the year 587 B.C. Now the prophet expresses his grief, his shame, his anger, his despair at the whole situation. Jeremiah laments the loss that has occurred, the loss of the temple, the destruction of Jerusalem, the holy city. He laments, it could have been prevented if only people had listened to the Almighty God as he spoke through Jeremiah. But the people's love for the Lord had grown cold, become indifferent, There had risen up false prophets speaking in the king's court that declared Jeremiah's words a sham. We're the ones speaking for the Lord. We have peace. We have prosperity. We have all good things. The Lord's hand is with us no matter what we do. And Jeremiah was there saying, no, no, repent. Turn back to the ways of the Lord. Put your trust in Him and not in the things that you have done. We'll talk more about that in a minute. God was calling His people to repent, but they didn't want to hear it. So the Lord's long-suffering, His patience, finally ran out. Justice had to be served just as he had been prophesying to those people for generations. Jerusalem fell. The temple destroyed. Holy things that had been set apart for the worship of God were taken off, taken away, back to Babylon, as signs of victory over the God of Israel. Many of its citizens also were taken into exile to Babylon. That generation, never to return. Their only hope in the midst of this now recognized decline, this now recognized death, was on the Lord's mercy. Mercy that reveals itself in many and various ways, but most clearly, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus shows us God's mercy, that incredible compassion. Great is his faithfulness to heal and save, to give hope to the hopeless. From our gospel text today, Jairus, that synagogue ruler, hoped in the healing Jesus could provide to his daughter. The woman who had heard about Jesus who had spent every dime she had to cure a 12-year flow of blood, hoped in the Lord, even to the point of trusting that if I can just get close enough to touch his garment, that's going to be enough to deliver God's grace to me because I know the Lord can do all things. That's real hope. Instead of despair, Instead of lament over woe is me, 
What am I going to do? No, that was real hope that they held on to. Next. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. That's the gospel light shining through lament. What things do you lament? What do you grieve over? What regrets play out over and over and over in your mind where you wonder, where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? Why didn't this work? And for people of faith who know about the almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful God, God, why did this have to happen? So Jeremiah is moved to write by the power of the Holy Spirit this lament over Jerusalem and her unfaithfulness. That included pagan worship, that included alliances with foreign powers. Rather than calling upon the name of the Lord, rather than being faithful to his ways and letting the Lord of heaven and earth protect and provide. Jeremiah's lament helps us to know what to pray for when we have our seasons of lament. For those of you who are aware of our, our school and our teacher needs, this has weighed heavy on my heart this past week. And it's not that time is getting short to find two teachers that I lament. It's not that the principal and the board haven't been diligent, diligently working all year to find a preschool teacher. They have. What I lament, what is heavy on my heart, is the wicked talk that I hear that put this school down by spreading rumors that we are on the decline, that we are on the brink of death, that we have no hope. And all of that simply ignores the facts. I lament that we're surrounded by people that put you down. You, the members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. You who have supported not only the church and your pastor and this school, but also the school for generations. What I lament is that people in their speak I mean, are wrestling with the struggles that our school has and our church has, or maybe they've got in their own lives. But what I truly lament is that people are completely unaware of the spiritual battle that is going on for the souls of those kids that come here. There is a fierce battle being waged between, between the Lord Jesus and Satan, the prince of this world. A battle for souls. Souls that are blessed to come here to be educated with Christ at the center. That's what sets us apart. We're not here to compete with the public school. In spite of people's perceptions, maybe even among us, and certainly within the community, that we're just out here stealing kids from the system. No. <laughs> no, honestly, a little friendly competition helps everybody get better. Education is better with competition. I lament that people in this community somehow see this school as a threat instead of a blessing. Because we get to have the gospel. We get to have Jesus in our classrooms each and every day. We have Jesus' words of promise proclaimed in devotions throughout class, in prayer. Prayer out loud, not just, okay, this is a little silent time for you Christians to have your, your moment with God. No, this is time to come before the Almighty to thank God for His 
protection, for his provision, for the food that we eat, for all the things God does for us. I am so very thankful that God called me here to be your pastor three years ago. Knowing that my youngest child was going to have three good years of Christ-centered education. And she got that with blessing upon blessing besides. Is our school perfect? Is there room for improvement? <laughs> Absolutely. Because guess what? Your pastor, your principal, your teachers, your staff, we're all still sinners in need of God's grace each and every day. But what a privilege it is to provide the one thing needful, that sure foundation for our kids. What a wonderful blessing it is. But it's so hard to remember that when the devil's lies are out there and, oh, people like to soak up that gossip and those juicy tidbits that the devil so easily plants. It's really, really hard to be faithful, isn't it? To hear someone putting school down or maybe just another fellow brother or sister in Christ and, and to say, hey, wait a minute. That's not what our Lord calls us to do. We're called to love and serve. Not belittle and judge. We're called to be faithful. And that's where Jeremiah takes us in his lament. And if you take God's word to heart, ponder your life's laments, whatever they may be, you'll probably find yourself admitting at some point that, okay, God, you were right. I was wrong. I tried to do this on my own terms, in my own way, without your guidance, without your blessing, without the good information that I needed. And so when you're stuck in life's laments, what do you do? Where do you turn? Because when you're stuck in that lament, that's when the devil's got his hand pushed down upon you. It's not letting you up easy. What can you do? God, through Jeremiah, tells you. Wait for the Lord. Remember Him. Which means to repent of our wrongs and seek God's forgiveness that we have in Christ. Remember these words. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never, never come to an end. They are new every morning. Not just Sunday. Not just your birthday. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is there to fight relentlessly for those who are his own, for those who have the hope, the joy of Jesus in your hearts, in your homes, in your families, in our school, in the community. For in the steadfast love of the Lord, there is hope. Hope for the deliverance that weighs us down. Hope for an eternity of joy because of what our amazing God in his love and mercy has done for you in sending Jesus to die on the cross for you. For God so loved you that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish. Though we may lament from time to time, but we have hope for everlasting life. In Jesus' name.
Amen.